So, yeah, when you start seeing that red, the emotional mind is going to kick in and the emotional mind wants you, it wants a short-term relief. So if you get out immediately, it's going to be like, ah, all right, I'm calm. I'm relaxed yeah. now. But then it's like, uh, and then the long term is going to mess you up because look, you would have missed this entire move up to continuation of the TTO. Yeah. So, um, yeah, always look at the higher time frames and always mark them out too so you can see exactly what's going on. Four hours good. Daily is super good because it did a three. So even if you get a pullback on the one hour, this is, this is just a TTO before it continues up as we can see currently. Um, and you said you don't trade on the one hour. Which time frames do you trade and recommend other people trade? Or four hours? Or we, oh. Yeah, so it, de it depends what I'm trading. Because like futures, I trade on the 5, 15, or 30 minute. But for future, uh, for uh, crypto, I only trade, I only swing trade it. I don't day trade it. So I, I usually look at the four hour uh, daily, sometimes a two day chart. But I haven't used a two day chart in a while. Okay. And for stock? Uh, for options, it, it depends. Like usually if I'm like, for like my intention to swing a, an option or a stock with options, um, I would, uh, what do you call it? I'll do the four hour daily and weekly. And the, for the four hours, what are you looking for in the four hours? Is that your, um, your entry or? Yeah, so if I'm looking at the four hour, let's just say, for example, let's assume this uh, XRP was a stock, right? Yeah. Um, let's see. So this is a four hour. I'm going to put a starter position in here, even though this is super strong because it's like almost no wick on the bottom. So there's a lot of buying pressure. Um, if this was a stock, I'll get in here with the starter position, and then I'll go on a lower time frame and wait for a TTO to add in the rest of my position. So once it broke here, I'll put a starter on the four hour, and then I'll add the rest right here. Because if it if it goes up and then it's, it's actually a reversal as opposed to a TTO, I'd rather get stopped out on my starter position than my full position. Okay. And for the um for the daily time frame, that's where you look for um potential take profits. Um, well, no, if, if I'm getting in on the four hour, my targets are gonna be the four hour. So if I got in here, if I got in off this break, this target is too close. I'll probably have this one as my first one, my second one, third one, fourth one, fifth, sixth, seven, eighth. And as you can see, pretty much in that one candle, it hit basically all of them except the last one. So this is a winning trade already. So let me ask a question real quick. Yep. Let's say your like your your take profits, your targets. It don't. It doesn't matter if it's even a dollar, right? It doesn't have to be a two dollar, three dollar move. It could be literally like ninety five, ninety six, ninety seven, ninety eight, or yeah, I do like um like two dollar moves. Like I don't know how to ask the question, but um I just I like cause the other day I did I drew up on my chart and I sent it to uh send it to someone and they're like the it's too close. So I should um basically do the take profits on the daily. You mean that there's not enough um, the take profits too low for them? Yeah. It might have been too tight. Let's look for an example. Let's check Tesla out. Uh, let's assume like this two and two continuation. Let's see how much it is to the first target. Yeah, the first target is a dollar and 40 cents. That's pretty good to me. However, Let's assume what is this? Twenty cents. That can be an okay move, but yeah, that that can be an okay move. That's like 
a fifth of the delta will be added. And again, it depends how they trade. Like for me, a 20 cent move might be good on whatever I'm trading. For Tesla, you might get, let's assume the delta is like 4.40. Of this move here, you'll probably get like a eight to $10 increase in the contract just going off the delta, uh, more or less. Well, you understand the question I was asking though, right? Like, yep. Yeah, like for some things, like like I was showing you just now on XRP. Uh, where was it? The one hour? Yeah, like XRP, like this move here, that's nothing. Like um, I, I probably won't consider that target one. Maybe I'll consider like target two. Granted, I'll be trading leverage as well. So, um, but yeah, like this tiny move is really not going to be much like to the first target. So I'll probably take, I'll probably take profit off like right here, like one, two, and three, as opposed to one, two, three, four, if that makes sense. Yeah. And like and if I'm trading, that... sorry, go ahead. If I'm trading a uh, like stock, if my, if the first target is like five cents or 10 cents, I'm not, <laughs> I'm not gonna take that. Like I usually look for at least like a quarter or more um, of movement depending what time frame I'm trading on. Okay, so 25 cents for a better movement. Yeah. And that's what I kind of get with, like when I say that I'm very picky with what trades I take. Because yeah. if, if the first target is like 10 cents and then the second or third one or fifth one is going to be like 30 cents maximum, I am not really going to care too much about it personally. Okay. And isn't that where risk to reward comes in? Because... You're going to check the risk to reward, and if it matches up to the criteria, that's only when you'll take it. Exactly. Like even this trade here, if you took the 212 two up on the four hour, um, let's say I even took it here, like that's like one and then two, that's still 2.86. So I would definitely take this trade. And even the first candle hit you with a 5.38. Pretty much amazing. And you would want the risk to reward to be higher than two, right? Yeah, two minimum. I don't I don't bother with anything less than that personally. Okay. And how do you do the box thing that shows you risk to reward? Because I couldn't figure that out. Or I didn't try enough. <laughs> That box when you highlight and it shows you like all the information. Yeah, that one. Yeah, so down here, um, right above the heart, click on that long position uh, with the magnet tool or like just like, I guess if you're using Windows, I think it's left control for Mac, it's left command just to snap it because my entry's here. And then I take the stop loss and just snap it to the bottom. And okay. And let's say if my first target's here, yeah, it'll let you snap to the candle as well. Then you just snap it. And then okay. it'll tell you what it is. And then you can mess with the settings, like like the lot size or how much USD. This stuff I don't really care about because I don't, you know, it's going to take into account. Um, it's going to take into account. Um like how much money you have in your account or whatever, however much money you are putting into this. So like, let's say it was account size. I don't know. Let's just say I put a hundred bucks into this. Would it show me? Interesting. Yeah, I never really like mess with the USD, the, the US, you know, whatever it is, the whatever values that you're trading. I kind of just looked at like the, the ticks and stuff like that. And like the percent increase from whatever I'm getting in. Okay. Is it all right if I could ask a question that isn't related with technical analysis? You can ask any question. Uh, awesome, thank you. So I, I was just wondering, um, so as far as for like, you know, taking trades and like you, when I look at a chart, like I could, I could, I think I'm like proficient at reading a chart and, you know, where is an ideal 
place to place a trade. But what I've been having trouble with is, is like waiting. And so like, I, I guess the question is, what are like the things that you noticed when you went from inconsistent to consistent? Cause like that, I feel like there's that, there's that gray transition area where, where one is inconsistent, has great traits, but then messes up because of the, you know, not following rules and stuff. Great question. So what I'm getting is that you're having trouble with your discipline, being patient, and also, I guess, to elaborate more on like what helped me overcome those things? Yes. Uh, so it's really one of the, one of the biggest like switches, I guess, that happened in my journey was just like really sitting with myself and just being honest. Cause, um, what I've noticed or at least like, you know, when I was still struggling to be profitable and consistent is that I never took the time to like really sit with myself and really <laughs> ask myself like what I wanted to do in the sense of like, if I want to take this seriously or not, um, and it's like being honest with yourself with what needs to be fixed and what needs to be and what needs to change in order for me in order for you to get there not you but like in general um like for myself if I like I you know I sat down with myself wrote down in my journal literally everything that I needed to change everything that I was slacking on um everything that I was making ex excuses with like oh the market the market is just hard right now. That's why I'm not successful or this and this and that. And it's like, no, like you're just not successful because you're lazy. You're not waking up on time. You're waking up late. You're not reviewing your trades. You're not taking the time to understand what works for you or what doesn't work for you. You're basically just like treating this almost like a game or not, not even like a game. It's more so you're, you're not taking it seriously because if, because trading is a business at the end of the day. And if you want to make money from it or be successful like any other business, you have to take it seriously. Um, and, and I was not doing that. Um, and also focusing on getting my personal life together. Because I'll try not to butcher this because I heard this last night and I wholeheartedly agree on it. Is trading will trading will bring about things in yourself that you need to that you need to change um if that makes sense like i only became more consistent when i got my own personal life in order um like taking the time to have proper routines to wake up on time to take care of my health take care of my mental health having a balance between my work my personal life and trading and, and, and a bunch of other things um because you know it sounds like you know how to trade, which was the same thing for me. I knew how to trade, but because I didn't have the um, personal di disciplines, they were bleeding into my trading. Uh, let me know if that makes sense before I continue. No, no, it, re it really does. It's, it's um, like I'm writing this down because, because when like, when, you know, when you're being, you're being real right now. You're, you know, you're saying like, you know, you're not, you, you're trading, you're treating it like a game. And like, honestly, like, it's like, for me, it's like half and half. And I want to stop treating it like, like it is a game. So yeah, and remember, it all makes sense. Perfect. And this is being recorded too. I'm going to put it on the YouTube later on. So you can refer back awesome. to this. Um, another thing too is, um, man, I just had it in my head. Hold on, let me see if I can remember it. Cool, I just remembered. Um, it's just, you know, also have grace for yourself. Like, you know, we're human, we make mistakes. Like, we're not gonna go from like zero to 100 overnight. Um, just start slowly. Like, just fix little things here and there. And like, make little rules for yourself. Like, for me, one of my rules is I cannot trade until I complete all of my routines. Um, so like, for example, for me, I wake up, I listen to 
Um, I do my affirmations. I listen to some music, go outside, stretch, do like a little quick little workout, meditate, um, eat, shower, all that good stuff. And then I get on the charts. And if any one of those things isn't completed, then I don't trade. Or I, or I, not, not that I don't trade. I can't trade until I do those things. Um, and I guess to go a little more deep into it, um, one of my biggest things that messed me up was trading while tired or trading in bed and all those other things and like not being focused. Um, and when I'm tired, I'm more susceptible to my emotions. So if I'm in a proper trade, but I'm tired and I'm sleepy, not focused, because of that, it, it'll make me more emotional and make me more prone to do emotional mistakes. Like, oh, let me let me take this position out of here because I'm, I'm green 20% and the market's going to take it from me. It's like, dude, the, the trade is still intact. You're perfectly fine. Um, but because I'm tired, I'm not thinking clearly. Um, so I created that rule for myself that if those prerequisites or requirements aren't met, then I don't trade. And if I don't trade that day, it is what it is. Tomorrow's another day. Because you also have to remember is that, um, you know, the market's going to be here tomorrow too. I'd rather end the day at zero than force, than force me trading tired and ending red, which happened a lot uh, before for me. Because I was like, oh, but, but I still have, but I got to make money and I got to do this. Um, a lot of things that traders do is like they think that they need to be doing something all the time when it comes to trading. But in reality, this is professional trading right here. Would you sit and wait? Let's say if it was like this four hour trade, I'll literally just sit here and wait until it triggers. Granted, I wouldn't sit here for four hours. I'll just set an alert and come back later. But um, let's say like on the 15 minute, we got two uh, double inside bars. Once it pierces up, I'll go long. Once it pierces below, I'll go short. Although in this case, I'll be looking to go long because daily is green. Four hours gonna flip green in a bit. Once it crosses this candle right there. But yeah, um, with trading, people think that they need to be always doing something, but it's literally just sitting and waiting and like, you know, understanding that just literally do what works and don't do what doesn't work. So me trading when I'm tired or sleepy or X, Y, and Z doesn't work. What does work is me doing my routines and trading that way. Um, let me know if that makes sense. Yes, one one hundred percent. It it really does, and it it really really brings light and insight to to like how I function. Thank you. Uh, of course, you're welcome. And one hundred percent. I'm probably gonna go on a rant for the next twenty minutes, but I guess you know. Uh. Yeah, I love this stuff. And I love sharing my experiences and things that I help other people. Because like, one of the biggest things for me, like my first mentor, um, he never taught me any of this. He was just like, hey, here's how you trade, you get in here, you get out there, blah, 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 blah. Never told me nothing about having rules. Never told me nothing about managing your emotions while trading. Literally never taught me none of that. So I had to go through extreme trial and error, and a lot of money getting shredded to uh, get to where I am now. That's why I'm super passionate about sharing this with, with others and stuff like that. But, or so with all that being said, um, in what works and what doesn't work for you, um, you know, you'll discover that on your own journey. Like for me, you know, there, there's people that I know who trade in bed and they're successful, they make money off it. That does not work for me. So I don't do it. Um, and it's also like not comparing yourself to others. Um, that's another big thing. Uh, just remembering that this is like your own journey. This is a marathon, not a sprint. Um, and just go at your own pace. If it takes you three months, five months, a year to be profitable, it is what it is. That's okay. Um, if it takes you less than that, great. Um, but ultimately, um, as you continue to journal your stuff and like notice your patterns, um, you'll realize like what works and what doesn't work for you. So in my case, I've learned that by me trading tired or trading in bed and doing like, you know, having these patterns that don't work for me, 
Um, it's just like really just stopping them and just focusing on what does work for me. Um, and people give me shit. They're like, oh, you're not going to trade because you haven't completed your routines. I'm like, nope. And, um, you know, it is what it is. I know what works for me and I know what doesn't. So I kind of just stick to that. Um, does it make me miss out on profits? Absolutely. Because there are some days that I don't trade because of the rules that I have for myself. But that's okay. Because I still end the week green regardless. Um, I'd rather get three three solid trades than force my trading days and get like 10 bad ones. So, yeah. I think that's really cool because even like like if I if I uh, if I think about that and the way that you have your routine set up before you trade and you're absolute with it, it just means that since you're doing you've been doing it for so long that if you don't do your routine then that just means that something is a little bit off and it probably is it's probably the best choice to not take a trade and i like that that just like right now just like blew my mind because because honestly like there are a couple of things that now i do differently that it's in the morning i the same thing with you i i can't trade in bed Every time I did have traded in bed, I've always lost money. Um, so I always make it to to my little station here. Um, <laughs> and and yeah, yeah, I, I like that's awesome. Love to hear that. And a hundred percent, man. Like one one practice that I have some people do sometimes with their bad habits is uh, and you know, again. Like I mentioned earlier, when it comes to trading, it's really more about discovering yourself and you as a human being, which is going to translate into your trading because the PL doesn't lie. And I have people sometimes who are stubborn is every time they break their rule, I have them go back on those trades and write down how much money they lost. And then I have them compare how much money they gained when they do follow the rules and how much they lost breaking their rules. And it, it can be a real eye opener because I had one of my, uh, somebody that I was helping that like, Oh yeah, I'm just going to take this lotto position. Oh, it was like 40 bucks and I was up 50%, but I didn't take it because it was just 20 bucks, but they ended up losing money. I'm like, all right. Uh, I was like, do me a favor or actually do yourself a favor. Take all those trades and let me know all the times that you didn't take profit and how much you lost instead and it's like oh all right cool i lost a thousand two thousand dollars because i wasn't taking those 10 20 30 dollar gains that i got and that stuff adds up like by a lot like you do that a hundred times that's that's what 30 times 100 three thousand bucks depending how much you you didn't secure um oh yeah that that's definitely a good practice to do um just write down uh, how much money you lose by breaking your rules and how much you make by following your rules. And again, we're still, you're still going to lose money by following your rules because trading is just probability. Like even my best setups, they lose, but I win them a lot more than I lose. Um, what else? What was I going to say? Um, Really forgot what I was, yeah, there's just a lot of information. I get caught up in it sometimes. Uh, oh, I just remembered. So like for myself, I'm a, I'm a reversal trader. I don't trade like, well, I trade continuations, but only one continuation I will take, um, which I'll probably show you guys if I can find it. Um, but I'm mainly a reversal trader. I don't scalp. I don't trade on the one minute, two minute, three minute. That stuff doesn't work for me. But there are people who it does work for, and that's great. Um, so yeah, just finding what works for you and just literally just sticking to that. Um, like for me, why I always advocate journaling of, of being a big thing is because I found for myself um, when I was reviewing my trades a while back, 
is that every like out of like a hundred like 50 trades or so let's just assume 30 of them were scalps and 20 of them were reversals i've noticed that for my reversals i was winning i'll say like 75 80 percent of the time but for my scalps i was probably winning maybe 40 30 percent of the time so i was like hmm all right let me just completely remove scalps from my strategy or just from like my trading actions and just only do reversals. And then once I started doing that, I noticed much more consistency in my um, account growth. Cause it's like, let's say I make a thousand dollars and let's say I make, let's say out of the thousand that I made off trading reversals, then I'll trade, then I'll do scalps and I'll lose like five or 600. So it's like, let me just completely eliminate the scalps and only do the reversals. Now, instead of making the thousand, then just losing it and giving it right back, doing scalping or what doesn't work for me, let me literally just focus on what does work for me. And that's pretty much, that's pretty much all trading is. Just doing what works and not doing and doing what doesn't work. It's super monotonous. It's just like rinse and repeat day in and day out. Because it is pretty boring just sitting here waiting for the setups, but um, you know, that's that's part of the game. And I'm done for now. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. No, thank you. I, there's like so much good stuff. I really appreciate all the info that you that you're providing, honestly. Cause um you said have people do is like, you know, write down how much you lose when, when you break rules and how much you win when you follow the rules. That's actually something that I've never done. Um, the only thing that I've done is when I break, um, when I break the rule, I just kind of tell myself next time just to follow the rules. Um, and so thank you so much for that. I really appreciate it. Absolutely. Yeah, it'll definitely be a big eye opener. I'll tell you that much. Because when I looked at my my trades, because <laughs> I would like wake up like at 9 20, 9 25 a.m., and then take like a trade like five, 10 minutes later and be like, why am I not making money? And then I, I and again, this goes to being honest with yourself. And sometimes that's hard. I, I literally sat down and went over every single time that I've done that. And I was like, holy shit. All right, I'm not going to stop doing this. And for those who are here, literally, we're just hanging out for the next hour and 15 minutes. Just looking at Bitcoin um, and, you know, whatever else, honestly. Or any, well, if you guys want to look at, look at other charts as well, let me know. Um, you can review some things in the meantime. I mainly just want to see, like, how you enter a trade, like, the things that you consider before and like how you think when you enter a position and things like that yeah so in this case let's say this move right here this 212 up or this 212 reversal i would have taken it um well maybe not on the 15 minute because bitcoin but just in general like i mentioned earlier the daily's green we did a 212 up on it um the four hours still inside uh, the one hour, oh, hold on, this Zoom thing is in my way. The one hour is inside. Actually, I wouldn't have taken this trade on the 15 because the one hour and the four hour are inside. If uh, higher, if the higher time frame is trading inside, I probably or more than likely won't take it because you're kind of just going to get chopped up like in, in this range because the one hour and the four hour are just chopping up right now. Um, like, as we can see, like, let's check the five minute. Yeah, even the five minute is like, yeah, you could have taken this this two up and it hit the targets here, but it's still just kind of just ranging in this this move right now. I would want the, the one hour to cross above here, which will be the the four hour cross above as well. So I'll probably look for a trade on the lower time frames around that. Or just take the trade on the, the one hour or the four hour. 
granted, you know, we don't have, we're not going to be here by the time this triggers. But um, one thing that I'll look for is just for the, the, the time frames above to be, to hit a direction, not to be chopping inside. Um, and as a new strat user, um, you would want to just take trades once the higher ones trigger a direction, like the way the, the daily did a, hold on, let me take these arrows out the way. Uh, trade settings, execution, cool. So like right here, this double inside, I'm not gonna really be taking the trade on the four hour or the one hour because we're just chopping sideways. And then even on even on the weekly, we're just chopping sideways still. So, so you're gonna wait for it to break out either above or below? Yeah, in, in this case, in this case, like for Bitcoin, I did take this uh, inside bar break to the upside on my crypto futures account um, off the daily. The four hour didn't really give me any setup that I that I like. I like this one instead. Um, You're gonna be holding that. Yeah, I took some gains already here. What was this move actually? Yeah, I took some gains around this area here because that's the first target. So I have my stop loss um, right here at this first target. If it comes back, I get stopped out. It is what it is. My next target will be up here. The volume is just pretty low because everybody is still on vacation and all the institutions and funds are closed for the most part. Um, but yeah, I, I this trade I would have taken. Like double inside bars on higher time frames, I love them. So to go through the process, what I will be looking for is um, check what the higher time frames are doing, seeing if they'll if they'll be flipping. Bitcoin is a little, it's not annoying to trade, but the monthly is inside, double inside right now. Then the weekly, still double inside. The two day, which I use sometimes, it pierced above, and then the daily is pierced above. So if this continues the momentum, we'll probably start flipping up. Although for Bitcoin, we have another $200 to go. 250 or more or less to go for it to flip up. And then if that continuation, if that momentum continues, then, well, the monthly, we're going to need a big move up to flip up. So we'll see what happens there. But yeah, for the most part, I just look at the higher time frames above where I want to take the trade on and see what's going on. But if it's inside like this, I, I wouldn't take a trade on the lower time frame because you're going to get chopped up. Like, as we can see here, just sideways movement. And yeah, 30 minute inside. If you're a scalper, this is gold for you. But like I said, I'm not really a scalper. I'm not going to take these little baby moves personally. And this might be a kind of, I don't want to say dumb question, but how it's would no you No stupid know? questions. Yeah, I, I couldn't find another word. <laughs> um, how would you know when you say like this is about the four hours about to flip? Like, how do you know that? Like, how do you know, oh, this is about to flip? Oh, well, well, just put it this way. The candle on the four hour was going to bigger on a bigger thing. The four hour, um, it opened up here. If it goes above, it'll be green. However, let me just delete this for now. It's like I usually mention, I just label everything. So right here, once it once this candle pierces above this, it'll be a four hour uh two up green flip. You can name it whatever you want. So once the four hour pieces above this, it'll be it'll be green, it'll be a two up. So it'll be a continuation of the, or a reversal of the move. Um, and then you'd have full time frame continuity to the upside. Yep, but you still got some inside on like inside movement on the weekly or monthly. So it may chop around for a little bit, but that, that remains to be seen because we're on a good uptrend right now. Um, 
technically, well, not technically, this is just this is a TTO right here on the lower time frames, right on the one hour. Yeah, like on the one hour right here. Boom, boom, move up. And then, like I mentioned, you can you can label everything else as well. So you can know what's happening. I would want to see what happens around here, 1690 area, because that's the monthly BF that we have. But you can also do this. Also be weekly two up. And then, then the daily. The daily, you can put different targets as well. One, two, let's just say target three for the daily. And then the weekly two up would be, would be, what is it, target two. Whoops, daily TP four. The heck? Two up. Or actually, I'll do uh, daily two up trigger is how I usually word it. That way, I know without having to like look at the time frame again. It's already labeled for me whatever time frame I'm on. All right, cool. Once this hits here, it's going to be the daily third uh, third target hit. Um, once it hits here, it's going to be the fourth target hit, and it'll trigger the weekly up as well. So whatever runners I have, it'll, it'll be good to keep because the weekly triggered a movement up. Let me know if that makes sense. Yeah, for the most part. And again, it'll, it'll, be, it'll get easier the more screen time you give it. Um, but since we have this monthly BF here, I would want to see what happens. If we get a break and then a retest and then a, a continuation up, perfect. Um, what I don't back? want. Yeah, go ahead. Mm -hmm. No, no, go ahead. I was going to say, can you go back to the four hour? And I think it was on the one hour too. So you, you're saying you would not take the two one two well right now if this is a two one i'll take it i'll take the like if it closes a one right now then i'll just move yeah. this here so it'll be the four uh, the four hour flip green the two up on the four hour but as of now with the current candle i'll i'll leave it there but if it closes then i'll just adjust it so instead of the four hour being a a specific like just trading inside it'll it'll have a direction that triggers so you would enter if it yeah. closes yeah. as a one if you would take yeah, the would, trade yeah i would enter the two and two up on the four hour okay and then the one hour if we bring this down here so oh this is actually perfect assuming both of these candles stay in this range and let's just assume that the four hour is going to flip in three minutes in the one hour as well this is what's called the multi time frame break which essentially multiple time frames trigger a move at the same exact time so for the sake of the conversation if the four hour is going to close in three minutes and a new one is going to print if it breaks this it will do the same thing on the one hour so the one hour and the four hour will flip a two up if we go on the 30 minute, well, actually, let me, let me snap this to make sure it's correct. One hour, 30 minute. Yeah, so if the 30 minute, one hour, well, if the candles close right now, let's say, and then they, they uh, break this point, it'll flip on the four hour, one hour, and the 30 minute, which will be a multi-time frame break. Um, which comes rarely, it doesn't happen often, but when it does, you usually get a good move. And it'll put more time frames in your favor, which it gives you a, a better probability of that trade winning.
and I have another question. So let's say we have um like a hammer, and it's yep. green. Um, is it stronger than a hammer that's red? Like if we're gonna go long, for example, or does that yes. the color like not matter? Uh, the color matters. Um, but if it's red or green, in your question, the green one will be stronger. Okay. For example, let me show you real quick. Yeah, so in this case, um, it's bearish, but it's the least bearish. And then here, this will be the most bullish compared to the two. There have been red hammers that I've taken to the upside. Okay, but normally you would just not take them like normally? Well, no, I would take them. If the setup is there, then I'll take it. And it meets my requirements. Okay. That's why, like, uh, when I made this actionable signals, I had the green and the red. So it doesn't matter if they're green or red. You could still take it short or long. Let me see if I can find an example. Uh, let's see. Yeah, like, eh, I wouldn't really consider this a hammer, but... Let's see if there's a better, better one. Would you want the wick to be longer down? I uh, that, but I would, I wouldn't want there to be too big of a wick on top. Okay. Uh, let me see if I can find a good one. I just saw it and just lost it. Oh, let's say for example, this one right here. I would want the, the, the body to be smaller, but this is okay. Um, I This I would definitely take. Reverse hammer, a shooter has a thinner body, but a reverse hammer with no wick on the bottom, which means nobody's buying it up. They're just straight selling it. Pierces below, and then you just take it all the way down. Actually, I think this is, looks like a PMG in strat terms. Let me see if I can find it to show you guys. One sec. So a reverse hammer is kind of like the shooter, like the same indication as a shooter? Yeah, exactly. Just Rob Smith calls them shooters. Um, okay. But yeah, this PMG looks like what happened here. You get the move up and then rest in peace. Take the stairs up, elevator down. And what this signifies, like the reason why it's a big move down, because once it reversed here, whoever went long, their stops are here. Whoever went long on this candle, their stops are here. Whoever went long here, stop, stop, stop. Cool. So once we get this reversal and it comes down, whoever bought in this candle, they're getting stopped out. Then whoever got in here, they're getting stopped out. And, and them selling out of their position is adding to the sell pressure going down so everybody here is getting stopped out in quick succession whoever got in here they got lucky they didn't get stopped out so they're still in they'll probably just continue writing it up and then you would get out at the the one one candle uh in in 
Well, in what case, if I'm long or if short? You, no, if you took the reverse hammer down. Oh, well, if I took it down, my, my targets are one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. But it only hit one, two, three, four. Yeah, only and four that's targets. Where you would get out. Well, that's what I'll, that's where I'll, I will still stay in until I get a reversal against me. In this case, it did a two and two up. So my runners would be get would stop out right here. Okay. Oh, okay. Yeah, that makes sense. Yep. You want to stay in the trade until you actually get um, some clear indication that it's going against you. Not exactly. just the second you see like a green. Yeah, because if you see it, you're like, oh my God. Like, remember, the yeah. inside bar is just yeah, yeah, consolidation. Yeah. It can it, it could do a two and two it continuation down. Yeah. Okay. And normally so, the runner is like one contract that you would leave. It really depends on how many you got in. So let's say, for example, um, let's just say, yeah, what, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Let's say I get 10 contracts. I'm probably going to take two out at the first one, then another one, then another one, then another one. Okay. And then I'll leave like two or three as a runner. I usually leave 20% of my position as a runner position. Okay. Yeah, we're just chopping right now. It is lunchtime anyway, so not much is happening for the most part. However, let's pretend we're going to take some trades. For those who um, have never used trading view, you can paper trade on it. Let's go on the five minute for just speed anyway. Pretty straightforward. Let's create a new order. Close the object tree. Buy stop. Let's say I want to buy five Bitcoin. I'll just quickly turn this on. Already triggered in anyway. And then let's see. And the first target would be there. Well, let's keep that there. That's a two two continuation, is what you're taking. This is a two two reversal because it, it, it reversed down and then it's reversing back up now. So this is long. Let's say, let's say, like I was saying, like if I want to sell a part of my position, I'll put some cells there. Let's check something real quick. Wise, I can put a cell here. Can you explain what you just did? I'm just using, well, like what exactly? Like the, with the fibs or just like with the orders? You just placed another order right now. So... Um, yeah, so if I bring this uh, the take profit down here, it'll take my entire position up. But if I want to scale out little by little, um, I can just add sell orders 
to partial me out of the position automatically. Oh, yeah. And then this is the 50 fib. So I can sell another one here if I wanted. And then we pretty much just wait. It's either going to stop me out or it's going to take profit. In this case, oh, nice. We got a nice double or crooked double top pattern down. Yeah, when paper trading, you can just exit out and I'll let you partial out. But when I'm trading futures, it doesn't let me do that. So I usually just get a long or short order and then just do like limits for where I want to scale out at because it doesn't let me partial out for whatever reason on trade of eight. They, at least should, let, trading they should let us do that. Like there's no reason not to. Yeah, I'm not sure exactly why. It's weird. Because it's a lot more work to, at least from what I'm, I haven't done it before, but like looking, it seems like a lot of work to do it your this way. I would definitely say so. Yeah. Whoever uses Ninja Trader, let me know if they let you partial out. Whoever listens to this. All right, let's see if we're going to get a... Um, move up after this candle closes yeah this is a reason why i don't really trade crypto on the smaller time frame that kind of just swing it like forex um to me these little moves aren't worth it yeah you can go like 100x leverage or 200x leverage and make it worthwhile but i don't really care for it personally so you're saying this is too small of a move well, that, but more so um, for me personally, since I mainly uh, trade or, you know, day trade futures and options, I don't want to add more to my plate. Yeah. Um, so I just swing trade Forex and, and um, I swing trade Forex and um, crypto futures. But this is what you would normally do even if you're day trading futures because you said you use the five minute. So what is yeah, five, say? 15 and 30 minute I use for futures. But for crypto and Forex, I only use the, I only use the four hour and higher. Unless it's like a, like a like a out coin that pumped up like a hundred two hundred percent. I'm not really going to be looking at the smaller time frames. Look at that. They completed a TTO. Very nice. You get the retracement and then they kill it down. But see right here how it closed like, not really a hammer, but you know, the algorithm might've picked it up as a hammer, a red one, and then it just came back down. So you could have taken that five minute TTO down instead of going long. Let's see if it's the first target. First target being down here. I think the one, then a new one hour printed. Yeah, new one hour printed. Let's turn these executions off. Yeah, the one hour did a two and two down. This is why I always uh, look at the higher time frames. 
because you always want to see what the higher ones are doing. If the one hour did a two and two down, you shouldn't be going long on the smaller ones. For the paper trade that you just did on Bitcoin. Yeah. So we were we were going long. So because our stop loss hit, you would have lost money, right? Yeah, the stop loss got me out of the trade. Uh, and and with a with a losing amount. Mm, okay. And with the one hour, let's see what happens. And now we just wait. It either hits your target or stops you up on the one hour. Why is it all green on the five Why? minute? On the five minute, only the four hours red. Where they were just all the fifteen thirty an hour were red like a few seconds ago. Uh, one thing I noticed with the time frame indicator, sometimes it glitches out, um, and it'll be red or green. But it's also because the time just flipped. Like for example. Uh, we opened the P and we were red and then they, they went back green because it went above the price that it uh, opened up at. And sometimes I have all my time frames open because usually on Forex or like regular stock, it'll say inside. But when I go here, it, it won't be inside. Like on the daily, it's saying inside bar, but there's no inside bar actually on the daily. Yeah. So I always like to trade with everything open like this. And then once I see a setup on whatever time frame, I go into the individual chart, switch to it, and then just take the trade there on the order panel. So when it has an inside when it says an inside bar and there's no inside bar, is that like a glitch? Yeah, it's just a glitch uh, with the way it reads the chart sometimes. It's like the same thing with um uh, what do you call it? It's the same thing with like broadening informations on trading view. If I go on the five minute, it'll like actually you no. Know, if I go like let's say on the daily, it'll like my weekly one will be a little off because this weekly is connected to two different candles. And actually, not on the daily, like here. This weekly is not connected to anything. But if I go on the weekly, it'll probably properly be connected. And then if I go on the higher time frames, you'll get these laser beams straight up as opposed to the direction they should be. Hopefully they fix that one day because it's super annoying having them move I... around on the different time frames. Did you ever send them? the like a question about it because for me um since i'm on the free account it wouldn't let me do the ticket but it did say free users like post on reddit because they have a reddit page and i did tell them to fix that on reddit but obviously i didn't hear anything back but i feel like if a lot of people tell them about this issue they should fix it yeah hopefully excuse me hopefully they do because it's super annoying like yeah, on uh, think or swim, it's like it's perfect. If they don't move, they stay put. They need to hire whoever works for thinking swim. <laughs> and think or swim needs to hire whoever lets you customize it beautifully because that's the only reason why I use training view. Yeah. Can you go back to the four charts 
Yeah, so I, I think you you did already say this, but like looking at what you have now, what are you what would you be looking to get into? Like a long or a short or nothing? Well, right now I wouldn't be really be looking to do much um until this four hour flips up. Okay, so you're waiting for the four hour to go green? Yep. Like once it flips up, then I'll probably take a trade off the four hour. But I wouldn't take it on the smaller time frames because we have inside. Well, this was inside. Um, and then the weekly and monthly are still inside. So I'll, I'd rather not get caught up in chop on the okay. mega, on the slow, uh, lower time frames. And once the four hour goes green, you're looking to go long? Yep. Once okay. there's a, either two and two up or the two two up, I'll take it. Also, I just saw this. We get a green shooter, but it still went down. So whether it's green or red, it's still an actionable signal that you can take. Yeah. Would that be like something you would have gotten into? Like that, a shooter, the green shooter? Or is that not, is that like not a good, not a strong? No, I'll, I'll definitely, I'll definitely take it. That's personally. good. Okay. Then you can just make money by going for shooters or hammers. Yeah, like I like I said earlier, like you could just literally just do two patterns and just make your money off that. Like, um, I think my first mentor told me that there's people who only trade bull flags and bear flags. That's all they trade. They don't trade anything else. It's, it's yeah. like that, that's that's pretty much what trading is. Just finding what what works for you and just sticking to that, and not making it overly complicated. Yeah, it's a lot easier that way. Exactly. As opposed to, I'm going to take every single scalp, every single breakout, every single this is too much. Just literally just focus on what you excel at. And, leave it at and there's a and there's a lot of them. Like There's like a lot of hammers, a lot of shooters. It's not like they're limited. Exactly. Is there, like, when you're taking a trade, um, is there anything where you can find, like, how much money you would make, like, in dollars? I know they tell you, like, percentages, but they never mention, like, the dollar amount, like, you know, when you do that box and it tells you the risk to reward ratio. It doesn't tell you, like, you would make, like, if you entered, like, X amount of contracts, you would make this much if it hit the target that you highlighted. I is there something we, like that or I think Weeble has a calculator that you could use. Okay. So there's nothing that, like automatic where you press you, there, you there there might be, I think like when I was mentioning here, like in the long position in the settings, you can like type in how much you I guess the account size or how much you're putting into the trade. I've never used it, so I can't really tell you hundred percent how it works or not. Um well actually let's assume I'm not sure if it does $100 account size or $100 position size. Because if it's my stop, it looks like I'll be losing $5.45 and I'll be making 16 bucks. But I always focus on percentages because not to say that the dollar amount is irrelevant. It's just, it's just variable to every trader. Like if I put $1,000 and I made 10%, I made 100 bucks. But if you put 100 bucks, you only made 10 bucks. So I usually just focus on percentages and just do that in relation to how much money I put into the trade. Yeah, that makes sense. I also have another question. Um, Go for it. If you, like the night before you were placing orders for it to automatically trigger, let's say if it did hit, if it you went long, if it does hit this 
um, candle or whatever, it would automatically trigger you in long. And let's say yep. it, it didn't, like it went the other way, it went down. Um, is there a way like to autom like is there a way for it to automatically get canceled or do you have to go in and manually cancel that and close that position? I would have to manually uh, cancel the trade. So let's say for example, let's say on this double inside bar on the daily, if I had a short position, the long one would have triggered, but the short one will still be pending. Yeah. Now, since it since it triggered long, I'll just go into the broker platform and then just cancel the short one. Okay. Kev. Uh, what stocks were you looking at? Well, actually, for the last like twenty minutes, because I gotta, I gotta prepare. I gotta prepare for something at one. Let me check your screenshots that you sent me. We can check some out right now. I was looking at Baba Nike B A Docu. Oh man, Docu! <laughs> that one was freaking amazing the other day. Uh, Baba, I actually added to my watch list. Actually, let's go <clears> here. Yeah, you have a three um inside bar on the yep. the one on the daily. Yep, triple inside bar. But full time frame continuity, everything is green. But now you got me thinking. Like now, I'm second guessing everything because yesterday everything was red, and then it went for uh, it went for a buy and. As a strat user, we're expecting it to sell. So one of the questions I had was, did you know that it would have done that move that it did? Or you just had to watch it play out? For what? For what symbol? For 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 uh for crypto, for XRP. Oh, for for XRP. <clears throat> um again, even though time continuity was in the short favor. Yeah. Um, you also have to see what's going on. Like, like this week here, we have a shit ton of buyers. Yeah, the we have a lot of it. we have a lot a lot of buyers because actually let's let's check something out real quick. The last time we were in this area down here, like sub thirty. Actually, let me do this real quick. Yeah, the last time we were in this area here was in June. So whoever didn't get bought, uh, whoever didn't get um, their orders filled in this area before it moved up and then came back down, there's still pending orders there around this area. Right. So that's why they got bought up super quick. But even besides that, uh, as a, with the being a strat user, you can still take it short once it goes short. In this case, it just flipped up, so we will go long. And then right here, and you could have gotten in here too. Two, doji, two up. TTO up. But so after that big red candle, you only enter the position like long after the, um, like, when would you? When well, would personally, you? personally, I wouldn't be taking this trade on the one hour for XRP. Um, but if I did see it otherwise, I would personally look for a short. If it wasn't presented, then I'll just wait. I'll just wait for a TTO personally. One thing I mentioned earlier, like the only continuations I take, I would, I would probably take this continuation here. Reason being, it has what I like. Doji candles. Um, a, a trigger with little to no wick, which signifies a strong move in, you know, the direction of the trigger. Um, even here, I wouldn't take this 2-2 two, two up. That's that's not what I like, um, even though it has the same thing. Tiny, tiny wick, move up. Tiny, tiny wick, move up. Um, 
If this was a two one hammer, I would definitely take this too. I mean, take this as well. Um, but if it was like a, a two and then a one that's pretty big, like maybe something like this, I myself wouldn't take it. I would prefer like a doji. Like this is perfect. That one's okay. Those two. Um, but yeah, based on time continuity and the big sell volume, um, it was leaning towards the short, but we also had a lot of buy volume. I like a lot of buyers step it up. So you could have taken it short or you could have taken it long. In this case, it went long, so you would have went long with it. It would have hit your first, pro your first uh, take profit here. It would have been a winning trade. Okay. Well, you know what I also figured out with um with with trading like options or whatever. I'm pretty sure it's the same thing with crypto and uh, forex, but the spread plays a big part in it because the wider the spread, the longer it takes to fill, and and I feel like you my trade always entering. Like once, once that, once the trade, once, once the trade fill, I'm all, all automatically negative. Why does yeah, that? So, yeah. So the, it does, so the bid and ask that, that, that depends a lot on that. So when it comes to the bid and ask, when, um, how do you call it? Let's say if it triggers, if, if the order triggers on the chart, and the, uh, and the bid is like, let's say 1.00 and the ask is 1.05. If you mark it by, or you like buy the ask and it fills you, because it has that spread, it's more than likely gonna open you up red. Um, which is why I mentioned to you before, is like I avoid things like, like I, for me, I don't trade Tesla. Yeah. Because uh, the, the spreads are like, I think like 10, $20, $30. Um, I use like things that, that have a spread of like 0 0.02 or like $2 to like $5 spreads. Maximum is probably like $10 spreads that I'll mess with. But if it's like a $10 spreads, I'll be using limit orders because I don't want to market buy and then I'm immediately down like, you know, two, three, 5%, depending on the spread or whatever it is. Okay. So for, um, for Baba for tomorrow, Talk to me. What are we doing? <laughs> well, in this case for Baba, um, the higher time frames are green. The weekly, it's it did a two up, but it came back down. Uh, the monthly, same thing. They sold it off, but the monthly hit the first target, so it's going to be an inside month. So we're going to get some chop action until, unless we break below or unless we break above. Same. Everything's going to pretty much be inside. So I'll be waiting to see what happens. If you want the safest, if you want the safest entry, wait for the week to go long. Wait for the week to break above, and then look for a TTO on the smaller time frames, like the daily or the four hour, the one hour, whatever. Also, oh, um, just go look, let's look for the retracement. Exactly. Um, in this case, if you want to get in earlier, you can definitely take the long or short off the daily. But I wouldn't go with full size. I'll do, I'll do um, a starter position. Okay. And um, B A. Boeing, ah, good old Boeing. I hate Boeing. Why? Well, Why? Well, maybe it's because I don't really understand the stocks yet. But it's like, I don't. I, I, I don't I just, really like the way Boeing moves. Um, personally. But yeah, Boeing looks bullish to me. Let's look at the higher time frames. Nice. The quarterly did a two and two up. Very nice. The monthly continuation. Weekly is inside, so you can get a two and two continuation. Uh, the daily did a two up. And then the four hour. What is the two day? Whoops. Yeah, the four hour did a three two bullish reversal. Yeah, it looks bullish to me. And overall, we're on a bullish trend. Yeah, on a so super bullish trend. So I had, I had, I had Baba. I had BA. Um, I also had Nike. 
at Nike. Are you paper trading or real money? No, I'm, I'm using real money. I should, I should he, probably, he graduated. I should probably be paper trading though. <laughs> well, well, again, if it's a new stock, you should probably paper trade it for a few days and just see how it moves and the spread and all the other stuff. Because um, I made the mistake when I first started trading. When I first started trading Facebook or Meta, the contracts are like 0 0.20, 0 0.30 apart sometimes. Um, and I got in and I took a fat L because when I went to get out of my position or sell out because of the spread, I took an extra $10, $20 loss per contract. Yeah, and you'd be buying like five to 10 contracts. Yeah, depending on um, the strikes. Okay. Yeah, right here. So we have a mega gap up after earnings. Um, yeah, for um, Nike, Mega Gap Up time frame. Let's check the higher ones. Are earnings a good thing to trade because you could get a really big Never. move? Really? I, I don't ever trade earnings. To me, earnings are the biggest gamble. Oh, okay. Because three things can happen. Well, actually, do you know what IV crush is? Implied no. volatility. Yes, implied volatility. But do you know what IV crush is? The crush part, no. Cool. So no, either either go on the Discord, look up IV crush. There should be some videos. and Or if not, go on YouTube and look up IV crush. And that'll tell you okay. everything on why I don't trade uh, earnings. Um, so really quickly, the quarterly is good. Did a two, a three reversal to the upside. Weekly is inside, but it we'll see if it does a three one two continuation. Uh, the daily. The daily did a three one two down, but it was a failed two two down, so it closed green. And the four hour is inside. I would lean. I would be leaning bullish for Nike. Okay, and the last one, um, Exxon. Exxon. What was the ticker? X O M. Oh, Zom. The. <clears throat> So for this, what I would first do, let's see, quarterly, did a two and two continuation. Well, shit, oil, oil is still super bullish for the most part. Monthly, there was a fail two down into a hammer. Very nice. Weekly, continuation, daily, reversal. But what I would do is look at futures because everything is usually gonna be following the future. So oil futures on an uptrend, uptrend. Yeah, I wouldn't be looking to short oil. I'll be looking to go long on it, personally. Okay. Um, so, all right. <clears throat> so, for, for, for uh, how do I ask this question? All right, boom, right? Let's say as a new trader, you figured out how to find tickers. Like you figured out how to find like stocks to trade based on like full-time frame continuity and and the trend that is going in. Yep. Chart in wise, where do you start? In the, sense the first of in uh, like I guess like like the vision. Making decisions in sense of like building a watch list or like to trade it, to trade it, because I'm pretty sure the same thing you would do for Baba, the way you chart Baba, it'll, it'll be the same thing you would do for Nike. It, it'll basically be the same, similar things. 
Oh, well, the yeah, it's pretty, pretty straightforward, although it'll be a little more advanced. So let's say, for example, uh, let's just say if I'm going to day trade Baba, yeah, I'm going to be looking. So usually I don't take the, the day trades off the four hour. I, I, I would, if it triggers, oh. I go on the. I go on the 5, 15, or 30 minute and look for a TTO in my direction. So okay. let's say in, in this, let me see if I can highlight this. So in this case, this is a failed TTO, but what date was this? The 27th? So we got the two two the three the two two reversal to the upside, huge gap up. Then let's go on the fifteen minute. So on the fifteen minute, we get the move up, pull back, go long off this hammer, hit the first target, hits the second target, and the third target. Well, I actually hit the third target at open the next day. Then they just killed it down. Let's check the five minute. Beautiful. Same thing with the five minute. Go up, come down, hammer, take it up. Hit a good amount of targets on the five minute. Um, and that's what. About a dollar fifty in my direction. That's pretty good. If the delta was like 0.40, you would have made $60 per contract, more or less. Maybe more, depending on the strike. So usually I'll just wait for the four hour to break a direction, then I'll look on the, on the uh, lower time frames, um, TTOs to get in for a day trade. Again, some people just some people just take the 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 trade based on the four hour trigger from my watch list. I personally prefer to just wait for a pullback on the lower time frames. Um, but yeah, you can definitely take it off the four hour if you want to. But I recommend if it's if this is a new concept to you, how I I I don't I always stress this is paper trade new things. Don't use real money for trying out new things. If if it takes you a week to practice paper trading it to get used to it and understand it, then just do that. As opposed to shredding money for a week while you figure it out. When you paper trade, you can't um, pick the strike price, right? Or am I misunderstanding futures? Like when I'm paper trading on TradingView, the few times I have, it's like they say like when they're talking about expiration dates, like buy this expiration, that expir. I couldn't find an option where I could choose like expiration dates. Yep. Yeah, so for options, they're going to have expiration dates. So you can paper trade your options on Weeble Paper Trade or Tinkerswim or whatever it is that you use um, and just see how it pans out. Like, you know, once you hit, once it triggers you in, set your stop loss, set an alert, and then set an alert at your take profit. And then um, when either one of them goes off, go back to your paper trading and then see if they gain value or lost and how much it increased by. And then you could choose your contracts and stuff through there. But if you're just taking the trades off of trading view, it's strictly in relation to the price. Because you, as far as I know, you can't get contracts or options. You can't trade options on trading view. Okay. And for futures, you don't need, there aren't different expiration dates. It's just. Well, trading. yes or no. If you're paper trading futures, um, then you can just use the continuous contract. Like, uh, where is it? ES1 exclamation or whatever futures. And then you add one exclamation. That's the continuous contract. But if I were to go, let's say if I'm actually going to trade, I would go on the March expiration. That's the, that's, the, that's the current contract that we're on for futures trading, like live trading. It's the uh, March contract. So I would be trading the March contract, but let's say the March contract is about to expire. 
let's just put ES and then go here. It'll show me the March contract, June, September, et cetera. You can bring up the September one, but the volume is going to be low because nobody's trading this. And nobody's going to bother trade trading this either. Um, just because, you know, the most recent one is the March contract, which, which is where all the volume is. So expiration dates are most important for options, basically. Yeah, because options basically revolve around strike prices, expiration dates, and all the other good stuff. But when you're trading okay. futures, all the other good stuff is literally just going long or short, and that's it. Just make sure you're on the most you're on the current um, contract. Got it. Yeah. Yep. Anywho, any last questions before I go? Or one more question before I go. Do you have the um the think or swim um deck stop link? Because I had downloaded it before, but I don't know. It just didn't seem right to me. Um, I don't have it. I think if you go to TD Ameritrade and then just click on think or swim, uh, it should give you the ability to download it. Can I don't I have a direct link to it. Go for it. Can I ask one more quick question? Yep. Um, here, there's a two one two. Um, hold on. How do I tell you which one? This one here. Go so up, up. Right here. Yeah. This two. When you see the two, and then you see the one, and then you're gonna short it. The bottom of the one candle is your entry, and then mm -hmm. you get in. Your prop, your um, take profits. Um, first target is oh, going to no. be at the bottom of the two. Okay. And for futures, that would be. That's an eight dollar move. That's really good. That'll be what eight times. Well, assuming you got one contract, it's about four hundred bucks, or thirty three ticks. And each tick is $12.50 for ES. You could ride this all the way down to the very bottom. Oh yeah, like if this triggered, if this triggered down, well, let's just assume actually, cause I would be getting on, on this three reversal. So I'll, I'll get on, on the three. My first target is gonna be down here to the one, 16 points, that's great. Second one is going to be 25. Amazing. Then they just kept on killing it down. Down, down, yeah. down. Yeah. If you took this trade, you were happy. Yeah. That happy would be enough person. for a day if you got multiple contracts. Yeah. Let's say you even got one contract and you took it off here. Say 16. Let's just round up. 17 times 50 bucks. That's 850 for the first contract. If you had three contracts, that'll been that triple that. At the next one, what's that? 25? 25 times 50. That's 1250 plus 850. That's 2100 just off those two contracts. Let's say you hit it to the third target. What's that? 62 times 50, that's 3,100 plus 2,100 of the other previous. You want to make $5,200 with the, with the contract. Oh my God. Well, it, it, it depends the broker that you use. If you use uh, Thinkorswim, I think you need about $15,000 in, in the account to trade ES. If you use, uh, if you use Trade of Eight, it's about 500 to 600 bucks for one contract of ES. If you're doing micro contracts, like micro ES, it's about 55, 60 bucks to trade one contract. It really depends on the broker and the margin requirements. And the payout uh, be similar, but it's just based on your startup. Um, well, I would, I would never really recommend trading a, a full contract of ES if you're new to it, because the same way you can make that much money going down, if it goes against you, you're going to be upset. Yeah, you're going to owe people. Yeah. 
have no. your stop loss always. You would have, yeah, you would have a stop loss. Like you would never have to owe people, right? Yeah, yeah, exactly. If you have <laughs> stop losses, then you'll be fine. But if you don't, then you're going to be upset. Well, oh, that's mm-hmm. another thing. One thing that you mentioned about new traders, I might, I'll probably make a video about this later. Um, always have a stop loss. Because people yeah, exactly. are like, oh, if, if I don't have a stop loss, it'll help me to not get stopped out. And this and this and that. And then I'll make my move. It's like, no, just refine your strategy. And look where you're messing up at. All right. So, quick, quick question. Mm-hmm. All right. Let's say you have a thousand dollars in your account, and you you want to take you want to take a trade. You wanna you wanna buy an option contract, and uh, let's say the option contract is about a hundred and twenty dollars. Mm-hmm. How much percent of your account are you supposed to be using? Well, that depends on your personal risk tolerance. For myself, I don't go more than 10%. Some people do 15%. I wouldn't recommend anything more than 15%, but I myself do 10%. So if I did an account with 1,000, I'll probably, I'll probably use 1 to 125 maximum per trade. But I would also be trading, I would be trading uh, stocks that help with that. Like I'm not going to be trading SPY because I like in the money and at the money contracts. And those are like 200 or more, usually. Okay. Yeah, a lot of people in the options Discord I'm in, they go way out the money just to get the cheaper contracts. Not way, way out the money, but they go like out the money to get the cheaper contracts because they're a lot cheaper than the in the money or at the money. Yeah, which for me, I don't, I don't really care for, because I used to do that too. I was looking at my trades from like a year, a year, a like beginning... 2021 and i would buy like <laughs> like 10 15 out the money spy contracts at like 0.40 and sell yeah. like 0. 0.45 0. 0.48 um i was like jesus i don't thank god i learned what i what i know now because wait so you, was, you made like eight dollars or what so i so I'll, I'll buy like 20 contracts at like 0. 0.40 because i'm like oh like before i knew about options i was like oh the more contracts I buy, the more money I'll make. But that's why I said it's, it's all in relation to percentages. Why am I going to bother getting super out the money contracts for an $8 move when I could just get an in the money contract worth the same amount or even less and get like a $40, $50 move for the same amount? Uh huh. If that makes sense. No, I don't. So, okay, with the, with the, with the $1,000 account, right? <clears throat> you're yep. only, like you're saying, like per. Per contract. So how many how many how many how many trips? Your either my connection is choppy or your connection is choppy. Uh, You're cutting out. I can clearly. Yeah, it might be on my end. Yeah, it's probably the Florida connection, man. (laughs) (laughs) Amazing. All right, say it again. I can hear you now. All right, so for a $1,000 contract, I mean, for a $1,000 account, you said only 10% um, is, is that's the amount that you're willing to risk per, per, per contract or per trade. Yeah. How many that... trades do you recommend you um, doing? Because, you know, you have what? some people who have like two, three, four, five trades. Well, that's yeah, like $500. You... If you find like solid setups, you can take multiple trades. That's fine. Just make sure they're solid because people fall into the, oh, I need unlimited day trades to make a lot of money. It's like, no, you just need a really, really, really good trade. Like with Coca-Cola, I bought a contract. It was what, like 70 bucks and the Delta, like, nah, it was like 70 to a hundred bucks, the price of the contract. And the Delta was like 0.50 to 0.70. I made about 60, 80% on that contract and it, and it was super cheap. So you don't need to trade all these like Tesla spy to make all these crazy gains. Like there's a lot of good individual stocks that you can make money off. Like for me, Coca-Cola first building small accounts is one of my go-tos because the contracts are cheap and the deltas are high. Coca-Cola. Okay. Yep. And I think, I think, like you were asking, like, would you still risk 10% for each trade? 
if you entered like multiple trades? Yeah. Yes, because if I have like three solid setups, I'm gonna put ten percent in each one of them. Okay, because you're 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 banking on whatever your chart told you was gonna happen. So it's, it it needs to happen. <laughs> exactly, and like I mentioned, if like I'm very picky with my trades. If the setup will lose me more than two point five percent, like two to two point five percent of my account on that trade, I'm not gonna take it. I'll I'll let it go. Okay, I just got to get better with 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 that risk to reward thing when it comes yeah, to just, trading. Just just practice with it and use like options calculators to like determine how much you'll lose per trade. Yeah, because I lost I lost. I lost some. I th I, yeah, I told you. I ain't even gonna say that, but I yep. like you said, please pay yourself. Don't forget mm -hmm. to pay yourself. Man. Always pay yourself. Why don't you do futures if options is like being annoying? Uh, I don't know. Maybe he's 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 good at options. He just needs to refine his risk management and some other things. Yeah, that. Anyway. Great talking to you guys. I will just I'll probably upload this video in the next 10, 20 minutes and I will just send you an alert on the Discord when it does get there. Um yeah. I will talk to you guys in a little. Thanks a lot. Thank you so much, man. Appreciate Very welcome. it. Bye -bye. Later. Bye.